Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial, and today we've got another Pictures Worth a Thousand Words video. So, uh, today I've got three pictures. Uh, these are taken immediately post-World War II, um, 1946, I believe, and uh, we'll be able to look at some of that as we're going through the pictures, but it shows what World War II operations were like. Um, so here's our first picture, and it is of a float plane. This one is a Curtis Seahawk. That is one of uh, two main float planes that the Iowa-class battleships used, one of three main types of float planes that the U.S. Navy uh, uses on battleships during World War II. Our three main types, this is a 1930s-era biplane float plane, and that's what you tend to see on a lot of the uh, pre-war and early warships, like the Pearl Harbor battleships, uh, probably had these on their catapults. This is the older style of plane, and by early World War II, these are already being phased out, and by the time the Iowa class comes around, they're, they're already out of battleship use. Uh, next up is the Vault OS-2U Kingfisher. Uh, this is the most common battleship float plane of World War II. It has already started being integrated into the fleet uh, by the time the United States enters the war. So um, many of the Pearl Harbor battleships had these already. Um, many of the cruisers in the scouting force had these already. And then of course the third type is the Curtis SC Seahawk. Um, and basically these planes are getting smaller and lighter and um, but also faster and easier to use smaller air crews, those sorts of things. And uh, a lot of that comes down to how they're used. So let's talk about that just briefly. In the US Navy, scouting for enemy ships, long range scouting is performed by the aircraft carriers. They uh, start the war using SBD Dauntlesses as the main scouting force or by flying boats or other land-based aircraft. The battleships are carrying aircraft specifically to spot the fall of shot of their main guns. We can fire our guns some 23 land miles, but we can only see about 13 miles from the top of the superstructure. We don't want to make the superstructures any taller than that because one, it'll make the ship unstable, more likely to roll over, and two, then the ship won't be able to fit under the Brooklyn Bridge to go into the New York Navy Yard, one of the main fleet bases uh, for the United States. So, the inclusion of aircraft allows us to spot the fall of shots for guns. The idea is the battleships all line up in their line. Each one has a specific colored die that their shells are firing. We've talked about die packets before. We might do another video specifically about them in the future. Uh, but each battleship had a different colored die pack. It's just a, usually a three pound bag of powder that goes in the shell. And when the shell hits the water and breaks apart, that powder spreads and the explosion is going to be in a technicolor. Uh, so New Jersey's die pack was blue. But each of the other Iowa's, the other fast battleships, each had uh, different colors. Uh, primarily based on what division they're in, because the divisions are likely operating together. And then uh, the slow battleships each had colors, and there's a finite number of colors, so they tend to uh, reuse them. But it's not likely that the slow battleships are going to be operating alongside the fast battleships in a line of battle. So a couple of aircraft are shot up there. Uh, they're flying around, so they see the blue shells explode uh, around a ship, and then they can call specifically back to New Jersey and say, hey, your shots went over, adjust by 200 yards. Uh, this really becomes less uh, important with radar because even our air search radar can see the fall of shot of the 16 inch shells because that water column coming up uh, goes higher than 50 feet. So it's picked up by the air search set. Uh, and, and so in nighttime naval battles when you can't use an aircraft to observe, they were finding that, hey, the, the modern uh, ships that had the full up-to-date suite, 
not necessarily the pre-war era ships that had only gotten light modifications, uh, but at least the, the fully modernized ones with the up-to-date electronics suite can see their shell splashes um, on radar. And so the, this idea of spotting isn't so necessary unless you've got multiple ships firing on one target. Uh, or if you're doing shore bombardment, there's no colored dust at all and there's no big water cloud that you can see on radar. So the battleships carry these planes throughout the war. It's important to note that no American battleship ever had a hangar for its aircraft. And the aircraft are not a part of the ship's crew. There are specific squadrons set up in the Navy to do scouting. And then those squadrons, which include the pilots, the aircraft, and the air crew, the enlisted guys who are doing all the maintenance stuff, uh, are split up between ships, often in the same divisions. Uh, so say Iowa and New Jersey are in the same division. They're likely going to get uh, their aviation detachments from the same squadron. They get these uh, pilots, these aircraft, and these uh, other enlisted aviation detachment guys and, and officers, of course, too. But um, th these other guys who are doing maintenance on the aircraft and whatnot, and they're assigned to the ship. When these planes need significant maintenance, there's no enclosed space to do it on the ship. Uh, so they'll be craned ashore, they'll fly back ashore to a, a nearby land base or to a uh, float plane tender of which the Navy had a bunch of that, that would probably be anchored at the nearest island base that the US had taken over. And they'd get their work there and then they'd come back out to the ship. And maybe it's significant work, so the squadron sends another aircraft out to the ship while this is happening. So uh, that's more or less how this works. Um, the aircraft are primarily here to spot the fall of shot, but we do use them for other uses. They can be used to scout for enemy ships. They don't have particularly long range. American scout planes aren't designed uh, like Japanese aircraft. Our doctrine isn't to use the ship-based planes to go out and do a search pattern and find enemy ships hundreds of miles away. That's what the carriers are for. The battleships are, okay, this guy is 20 or 30 miles away. Uh, the plane can go out and find them there. They're also used a lot for search and rescue. So a plane gets shot down, um, they don't want to crash on this Japanese island, so they'll intentionally touch down in the water out in the coast. Now they're still close enough to the enemy island that there's going to be um, shore batteries firing at a ship. A ship going at 30 knots is still going to be within range of those batteries for uh, a half hour or an hour while they're conducting these operations. So that's 60, 100, however many shots that that shore battery gets to take on you. But an aircraft can uh, take off from the ship, still far out at sea where it's safe, land in the water. Uh, the person that they're rescuing can climb onto the plane, the plane can take off and come back. Or oftentimes, it's like with the, uh, with the Seahawk, it's a single uh, cockpit plane. There's nowhere for somebody to get back in. So they would just sit on the pontoon and the plane would taxi back out to where it can run into a friendly ship. Often not its parent ship. It's not gonna go to the center of the fleet where the battleship is. It'll stop on the outskir outskirts of the fleet where there's a submarine waiting on plane guard duty or a destroyer there that can, uh, that's more maneuverable can pull up alongside and pick this person up and then the plane can take off and go back on. Um, also worth pointing out, most of you guys know this already, but the battleships don't have a flight deck per se in World War II. Uh, the plane isn't taxiing and taking off using wheels and then landing back on the ship. And that's where this picture comes in. The plane is shot off of the ship by a black powder catapult. A 15 pound black powder charge is used to shoot the thing and there are these rails on the back of the ship we'll see in a future uh, picture here. And then the plane takes off, flies around and it comes and lands in the water. It's got a central pontoon under the center uh, fuselage, and then it's got uh, wing-mounted pontoons that basically keep the thing from tipping over. Oftentimes large flying boats will do this from like lagoons and inlets and, and things like that close to shore where the water isn't that choppy. But the battleships are operating out in the middle of the ocean. The good news is the wake of the ship is a smooth flat patch directly behind the vessel. So the pilot basically uses that as a runway 
lands on it and taxis up to the back of the ship so that the crane can reach down and pick it back up. In this first picture in the series, we can see the plane taxiing at the back of the ship. You can't see the ship at all, but you do see this cable coming in in the bottom right corner uh, and this canvas and netting structure. Uh, so basically th there's a hook on the underside of the pontoon and the, this canvas structure is dragged behind the ship and it's floating. The ship has to be moving at speed to keep this thing dragging through the water. If we stop, it sinks and gets caught in our propeller shafts and causes all sorts of problems. We have to send divers down, it's, it's a big deal. Uh, so this is something that can be done underway. And we're not gonna be moving at full fleet speed while we're doing this, but we are moving it at uh, a couple of knots at least. So the plane comes up uh, and it drives up onto this canvas sled that we're towing until its hook can catch the net. So now we are dragging the plane behind the ship and the plane can cut off its engines. And you're seeing that in this picture. The, the plane is already hooked on the net. The engine is not spinning. You can see the propellers pretty distinctly. There isn't a blur there. Notice that the cockpit is open. What has to happen now is the pilot has to climb out of the cockpit and uh, hook the hook from the crane on the battleship onto a pad eye on the aircraft so that it can actually be picked up onto the ship. In the second picture, we are, uh, looks like we're on top of turret three or we're possibly at the aft end of the superstructure uh, near the aft range finder looking out over turret three. And you can see a couple of things. Uh, you can see the catapult is turned across deck at an angle. That's that like girder structure, it almost looks like a trestle bridge. I can see that the part that's overhanging the back of the ship um, has a little sled on it. That's where the plane gets sat. When it gets shot off, it's basically the sled is what's moving. The aircraft gets ejected from the sled and the sled stops at the end of the catapult. Uh, which at this point is pay pointing towards the uh, the gun turret, so they couldn't launch a plane like this. It's turned like that so that they can crane the aircraft back onto it. Uh, so the aircraft is either taxing towards the ship or it's being towed by that canvas sled, and we're going to start to pull that sled in. And you can also see that the aviation crane at the fantail is overhanging the stern of the ship as well, and you can see that it's got the, the hook down. So the plane will come under that, they'll pick it up on the hook and they'll set it right back on the catapult. Iowa-class battleships have three places to park planes. Uh, one on the port catapult, one on the starboard catapult, and one on the deck in between. As originally commissioned, New Jersey and uh, Iowa had three Kingfishers assigned. By the time they deployed to the Pacific, they're down to just two. They're, they're not using that central deck park anymore. Um, there, there really isn't a need for more than one aircraft. It's just too much redundancy and they're, at, they're using that weight for other things, more anti-aircraft guns, more flagstaff, more radars. Uh, and then late war, uh, the Curtis Seahawk is introduced and replaces the Kingfisher and all these battleship squadrons. I'm not sure off the top of my head if Missouri and Wisconsin deployed with Kingfishers originally or if they had uh, Seahawks already by the time they make it to the war. My bet would be that Missouri, since she's entering the war latest, probably only ever had Seahawks. Wisconsin, I'm, I'm really not sure of off the top of my head. So, um, some other interesting things to see in this picture. You can see a uh, winch or a hoist here on the starboard side of the ship uh, to the left of the photograph, left bottom corner. And you can see that there's a bunch of deck crew um, with a line that goes from that to a little capstan on the deck uh, or a pad eye of some sort, and then it goes out through this uh, chalk in the rail. And that's probably where they're towing this uh, sled from, if I had to guess. And so you can wheel back in the capstan to pull that sled on board. Another interesting thing, if you look in the bottom right corner of the photograph, you can see uh, part of a 40 millimeter gun mount. So that is the gun shield that's obscuring much of the right-hand side of the picture. And uh, you can see the gun tub there with a bunch of oval-shaped holes in them. 
That's the ready service ammunition for this gun. If this was wartime, that tub would be filled with the four round clips of ammunition. This gun is sitting on top of turret number three. There isn't an ammunition hoist going up to it uh, to get ammunition to this gun. It's not the easiest gun to resupply. So in an engagement, they are primarily uh, using the ready service ammunition that they can keep in the tub around the gun. And then after the engagement, they can move ammunition from a clipping room in the after superstructure and carry it up the ladders or, or hoist it using a J-Davit up under the gun to refill this ready service ammunition. Uh, the fact that this is not the case and that they're wearing more of a uh, winter blues uniforms in this tells me that this has to be post-war. Uh, the, the ship just isn't out of the war zone in cold weather during World War II uh, when she's carrying uh, Seahawks like this. So I believe that this picture is from 1946 based on that. Um, let's go to the third and final picture in this series. All right, so in this picture, you can see that the aircraft is being lowered back onto the catapult. The catapults are now uh, both port and starboard, more or less, in their proper stowed position. And then um, they just turned off the side of the ship to shoot the aircraft when they're ready to go. So the plane is sitting there waiting. The pilot runs out. He climbs up a ladder into the plane, and then they shoot him using black powder. Very similar to how catapults on modern aircraft carriers work, except they're not strapping a uh, five-inch gun charge, essentially, to the, the back of the plane. They're using steam. Uh, that center of the deck between the two catapults is where the third aircraft would be carried if we were carrying one. It's where the ship's boats are carried. Uh, and you can actually see uh, see just about dead center in the picture is the right 16-inch gun barrel for turret three. Just to the left of that, you'll see there's a couple of sailors standing around a thing that sort of makes this V shape. That is one of the carts for the ship's boats. They're stored there in uh, peacetime. They're not carried in wartime. So that's another indicator this is uh, after World War II. Um, and they are deployed using the crane. And when they're on the ship, they're in these carts that are V-shaped to hold the hull. They're not just sitting there catty wampus on their side. And they can be rolled around. If the 16-inch gun is turning one way or the other, they can take these and, and move them from one side to the other. Um, Iowa-class battleships do not carry aircraft past 1950. And probably by 1948, they're removed from all the battleships. I'm not sure, because Missouri is the only one that's retained past 48. I'm not sure at what point she loses her catapults, if it's right then in 48 or closer to 1950. Um, but at that point, the Iowa-class battleships stop using float planes and they start using helicopters. And the helicopters are just a way more effective uh, tool for battleship spotting. Uh, the things that aircraft do better than helicopters, they fly faster and they can have longer range. Well, the float planes aren't like that. The floats limit their fuel capacity, their lift, their speed, because there's so much drag from them. And uh, these aren't designed for long range. Plus, high speed doesn't help you spot a target. Being able to hover and do a bomb damage assessment after the shells come in helps you. Being able to hover and pick somebody up out of the water really helps you, as opposed to having to land an aircraft. Um, being able to transfer people from one ship to another, which you can't really do with float planes, but you can do with helicopters, uh, really helps. So as soon as the Navy's able to, they get rid of the uh, catapults, they get rid of the aircraft, and they put helicopters in instead. The crane is left for boats initially. By the 1980s, it is removed, uh, and a full built-up flight deck is installed back there for helicopter aviation. The one other cool thing to point out in this picture, and another indicator that it is post-war, is there is an awning on top of turret number three. That's really weird. What is this awning shading? You can see it's a canvas screen, and there's a, a pipe fixture around it that's just lashed to. And uh, if you look at the outboard edge, almost looks like there's wheels or some sort of base on it. I was looking at this for a while, 
like, huh, that's really weird that they've got it on the turret. It's not screening anything. Would they like move it over the edge of the ship and then that's their fantail awning? And then I thought about it's not screening anything. That's the screen for the film projector. Eventually, in 1950, they're going to install a film projector booth on the fantail uh, to keep the movie projector in. The ship would often carry two movies, uh, and then you would trade those movies with other ships when you uh, encountered them. And those movies are just projected against a canvas screen that they would rig. And it seems like this thing that we're seeing here, and this is the first time I've actually seen one in a picture, um, is the, that screen. So they would pull it down off of the turret, set it up, project right onto it. They like this enough that they eventually installed an entire enclosed room for projecting into it. Uh, this would probably be set up at the fantail near the crane, and they might even use the crane to help support the uh, upper side of it. Or they may use some of the aviation tie-down points to string it up like a tent or something. I'm not entirely... Uh, sure, because again, I, I haven't really seen one rig. When there's a movie playing, they don't take uh, pictures of it. You know how much the flash stinks at a movie theater. So uh, again, former another indicator. This is probably uh, a peacetime situation. They wouldn't have that rigged up and just sitting out there on top of the gun turret in wartime. Our assumption is in the 1950s when they've got the projector booth that is shooting towards the back of the ship. And at that point, there aren't any float planes or uh, catapults back there. But it seems like in this picture, between that uh, booth and these two bell-shaped things, one on each side of it, those are probably the speakers for the movie, uh, that they would just rotate the turret 90 degrees, lower the screen, and they've got the speakers there rigged already. And uh, then they can project directly onto the screen. They got sound shooting at the crew and everything. And then when they install the booth in the 50s and they've got the other stuff out of the way, they probably change how they do it. Another cool thing you can see in this picture is the uh, Carly float life rafts under the catapults. Uh, just any space being used as storage. The, those catapults are dead space by stacking two or three on top of each other under there. It still has enough clearance to turn. Did you notice anything in these pictures that I didn't talk about? Let us know in the comment section down below. If you've got any suggestions for future uh, pictures to use in Pictures Worth a Thousand Words, there's a link in the description below to my Facebook page. You can't really send pictures on YouTube and trying to describe the picture of the ship firing her guns. Which one, man? I don't know. Uh, come over to the Facebook page and shoot me a message with that picture in it and we'll add it to our list. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below for more ways you can donate to support the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.